Uh, hi everybody, this is the requested tutorial about the absorption spectrum uh, or the UV visible um, calculation methods. Um, so today I want to talk about three methods uh, that have different speeds and different accuracies and um, when to use them and how to use them. Uh, if you go onto the um, Gaussian website uh, in their manual, there's five methods, and the last two you can't really click on them. So, and I never use them. I have no idea what they are. But the ones that I know about is Zindo, CIS, and time-dependent DFT. So that's what I will show you. Um, so today uh, we will be looking at a benzene molecule. Um, and uh, the absorption of the mo this molecule changes with its conformations, either when it's flat, so the trans, or when it, it bends and becomes cis. And that was my project several years ago, as to see how the substitutions on the rings influence the absorption. And I did a lot of this um, time-dependent DFT calculations on those molecules. So let's start with Zindo. Zindo is a semi-empirical method. So uh, in your command line there for Gaussian, uh, you can just write Zindo and you don't write any basis set because semi-empirical calculations have their own. Um, and uh, it's very quick, but uh, please make sure that the molecule you're working with fits the um, the training set for Zindo because if it's very different from the molecules that this method was trained on then you will probably get something very off. The, it's very quick uh, but you have to be careful uh, with how you use it. The next one is configuration interaction singles. Uh, this method is post heart tree fog Ibanisho method, so it works for any molecule. It's um, relatively quick, uh, but um, for my system, so for uh, azobenzenes, it wasn't particularly good. Um, I used um, CIS, so singles and doubles, and for me, it didn't work out that well, but um, I read a lot of very uh, positive feedback on this one so you might want to consider using it um, and so the input for configuration interaction singles uh, is very simple so instead of uh, whatever method you're using you write CIS and um, you have to specify a basis set you probably noticed that I have this solvent added here that was because I was comparing with uh, literature values that are uh, that were computed in DHF. Um, and the output looks as follows. It's the same thing at the beginning and then closer to the end there's this new field, excited states. Uh, and um, if you scroll a little bit further down you'll see excited energies and oscillator strength. So that's what you're sort of looking at. I computed the um, three first singlets for all of mine. So if I just go back to the input um, for CIS, um, you don't you you could mention there's like options that you could add if you want to. I didn't have them here, but I have them for the um, uh, time dependent one. So here I was only looking at singlets. Uh, you can be only looking at triplets, for example, and if you go to the Gaussian website, there will be several options of the different combinations and this and that, so you can just read that and figure out what fits best your uh, situation. So going back to the output, um, you have here the excited state number, uh, so what it is, singlet, triplet, etc. Uh, you have the energy in electron volts, you have the wavelength in nanometers, and you have this F parameter, which is the oscillator strength. The higher it is, the more probable is this transition. 
as you can see this one is zero therefore it's very improbable and the one underneath is one well more than one um, and so this is very probable it's the f parameter is supposed to be a percentage but I'm not sure how it has it can go higher than one anyway if someone knows just tell me because I would like to know I didn't find this information anywhere uh, anyway so yeah this is this is very um, straightforward you have the orbitals participating in the transition listed on the left and uh, this is this is it um, for the time dependent DFT so the last one uh, for me was the, mo the more accurate one but it took slightly longer uh, but I, yeah, you just have to try out there's no way of knowing ahead of time and uh, the input is uh, the DFT functional and then you add TD equals with the option that you want to use so I had singlet you can add whatever option you find in the Gaussian website that suits you and you have to of course add the basis set uh, that's it the, it's very simple um, my last point is um, make sure that you have some literature values to compare to uh, because these numbers could be off by like 50 nanometers or 100 nanometers and you have to calibrate your um, your system so what I did is I had uh, four known which is not that much, but that's the only thing that what I could found. Um, four different molecules so with different substituents and the known absorptions, um, and I calculated the predicted ones and I compared with the literature and then I scaled them so that I could have a better result for my unknown molecules. And uh, yeah, so be careful with that and don't trust your computer. And that's it.